We are at the end of our projectile motion unit and we've been looking at how we can consider resistance in the vertical and horizontal directions, right? Um, and I guess just something to get you thinking of like when you think about like resistance, right? If we have a particle that's moving without resistance, we know that it creates that kind of parabolic shape. If you think about things that you can throw and things like that, what's the next kind of object that you think that would experience the least resistance or kind of drag? A bullet? A bullet, a bullet definitely. I mean, what is, does that also make a parabolic shape or what does it make, like a straight line and then dips down or? Yeah. We just go straight up in the. Borders make a parabolic line. What do? Borders. Bold, what? No, mortars. Oh, mortars, okay, yeah, right. The, the shape with the least drag is like a water droplet sort of shape. Really? Oh, that's pretty cool. The one that sort of does this. I mean, I was thinking of things that you can throw. So, <laughs> all of those seem a bit difficult, bullets and water droplets. What if you throw is a water droplet sort of shape? Potentially, potentially. Um, the, other, the next one that I, I found was apparently a, uh, a golf ball um, due to... The dimples? Yeah, the dimples. What do the dimples do? They... From what I understood, they reduce the drag. Like they, as it rotates around, it creates like a thin layer of air around the golf ball itself. That's what the dimples do, um, apparently. I don't know the full extent of how that works, um, but that's what I found out. Um, and then the next thing, like just in terms of objects that we have available to us, uh, yeah, like a tennis ball. Um, and then something with the most resistance. Well, if we're thinking about Again, objects, <laughs> just like a book. Well, I, I was thinking of like, um, like a table tennis ball. So. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really reliant on, this, on the surface area, right? Why do you do that? Well, now here's the thing that I was looking up. Um, that's a uh, table tennis, right? Table tennis ball. As you tend to introduce this factor of resistance, like, it becomes less like a parabolic shape, right? So obviously this model of a parabola is in an ideal world without resistance, right? And so when you start to add these factors in, we have that factor of resistance. How does it, that affect things? Well, it does change the shape a little bit and it resembles something that looks like this. It's not quite a parabola anymore. And we're gonna have a look at what that equation actually is in a moment. But here's the first question I'm going to give you. So the first question, um, the best way to approach these questions, just like with normal projectile motion actually, is to consider the horizontal and vertical components separately. Right? So in the same way that we did this without resistance, we're gonna do this um, with resistance. We're gonna consider the horizontal and vertical parts separately, um, but now considering those uh, resistance equations that we're used to seeing. Okay, so here's the first question I'm gonna give you. And, um, as you've noticed, um, they sort of talk about this firstly in a vector form here. So just be aware that they can ask you this in any way they like. They can ask you in terms of vectors, they can ask you in terms of like a Cartesian equation, they can ask you in a parametric equation. And so you just have to be aware and be able to interpret what this is really saying. You know what this means. Like V equals to 15i plus 30j, that's in component form, right? So if I have my vector form going out over here, here's my vector, I've got a horizontal component of 15, and then I've got a vertical component of 30. So that's kind of what that's saying there. Right? So just be able to interpret that. Uh, and you also know that generally when you start these questions, you start with F equals to MA. And if we have something that is directly proportional to the velocity, that's kind of like your linear equation, right? So you know that in terms of horizontal and vertical that you have, um, well, what do we have here? Our equations for acceleration, x dot equals to minus kx, or y double dot equals to, now what's the difference with our vertical component? We've got, what do we have? Gra motion. Motion, well, what, what other factors do we have when we look at gravity? Oh, gravity. <laughs> what other factors do we have when we look at vertical motion? Yes, gravity? yeah, that's right, how did you know that? And also, Pay attention to the direction. So we're going, um, oh, did I say up? I think it's up. Uh, yeah. like Fire it up. The issue will be very clear in the exam. So y dot, dot equals to minus g minus k y dot. Okay. 
Now, when you're looking at this, uh, remember how we have this potential issue of what do we do with this factor of m here? And there's a few different explanations for it. Um, the easiest one is that a lot of the questions sort of just disregard it. Um, they use terms like unit mass, um, or they just straight up give you equations that don't even have the mass in it at all, right? Yeah, unit mass is what they tend to do. Yeah, mass of one, unit mass. Um, but sometimes what they'll also do is they'll give you this, can you see this equation over here, right? Like they've straight up giving this equation, you don't have to consider m at all in here, right? And that's what these equations we're used to seeing. But again, what have they done here? They've given it to you in terms of, you know, d 2y dt squared, which is, you know, the second derivative, right? So that's just something to consider with that. Um, that they may just straight up give you the equation. And they've also been nice here, they've given you k equals to 1 and 5, and g is approximately equal to 10, which I know, again, cardinal sin in physics, but that's okay, we'll work with that, right? So, let me show you how we can start this question. Like I said, we want to start with the horizontal and vertical component separately. Let's start off with the horizontal component, right? We've got what k is equal to, okay? And um, to answer Angus's question, yes, we are going to derive the equations of motion, but before I do that, that should be a dot there. Before I do that, I'm going to write this in this way. And there's a particular reason why they've done that, OK? What I want you to think about, right, is that this expression here represents velocity. And this expression here represents acceleration. And so the relationship between these two is that this is a derivative of this variable here, right? What does that mean in terms of what kind of equation have we actually constructed here? So if I have some expression written with the derivative side, we've, we've, we've learned how to approach it. These are called differential equations. And this form here is actually something that you can remember. Because it's a differential equation, a lot of differential equations ends up, end up being logarithms or exponentials. And this one, in fact, is an exponential. This is simply the differential equation, and this is the solution. x dot is equal to ae to the negative t on 5, right? That's the solution to it. So you can actually solve this in one line. Um, now, if you're wondering how does this come about, the derivation is also um, approachable, but it's just a lot longer. So I will show you that, but then I think also be aware that you are able to do this. Firstly, just to explain, why is there a variable of t here? Well, because if you think about it, what are we actually integrating and differentiating with respect to? This first part, we're integrating and differentiating with respect to t, okay? Yeah, well, I won't do it in one line. I'll also show you the longer way, right? So if we want to think about it, I said that this is the derivative of this. Would you agree, right? So I could write this as dx dot dt. And remember, we're with respect to time here, right? So over there, yeah. So equals to negative 1 on 5, uh, or just x dot, actually. OK, so far, so good. But. We know we can't integrate this straight up. Why not? Because we don't have this in respect to t, right? So what do we have to do? We have to talk about the respect. Talk about the respect. Mm -hmm. RESP is ECT. That's what it means to me. So what we have to do with this, we have to um, so <laughs> take the reciprocal. Right. I love the hand movements. OK. Uh, so we're getting negative 5x dot, OK? Do you want to go ahead and do that for me? Did I do something wrong? Oh, that should be, actually, that should be on the denominator. Good catch. Thank you. So I want to integrate this. What's this guy going to be? Yep. And we also have our constants. Yep. We'll deal with that in a second. Um, this is where, I don't know what notation you guys use for your constants here, but typically when I'm doing manipulations, I do like c sub 1. And if I'm going to divide by um, both sides from negative 5, um, that just becomes c sub 2, right? Because it's going to be a different constant, technically. Um, now, here, um, you're starting to see like little bits and pieces that are familiar, right? You can see the negative t on 5 component over here. But how are we going to get x dot as the subject? Yeah, well, actually, we haven't found c here either. 
because this is technically a constant. So don't worry about that just yet, okay? Um, <laughs> we are gonna find C and or A, whichever one you want, right? But before we do that, just think about how we can actually get this um, in a similar form to here. What do we need to introduce? Sorry? How can we or why can't we? We can find it now, but I want to get to this stage to show you it's the same thing, okay? So, how can we get to this stage here? What do we need to introduce? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, how do we get from here to something that looks like this? Because this is our solution. What's the on the other side? Sure, I wasn't thinking that, sure. <laughs> I'll chase this rabbit hole, and then what? Ln, so like do like the x equals to e to the power of those stuff. Mm -hmm. So, e to the power of this. Yeah. Yep, okay. But when you think about it, yep. when they're minus like that, mm. it's also going to just be plus, but it's a constant, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yep. It doesn't be care. <laughs> so, plus. But, like, but when they're C3. Plus like that, that means it's, it's multiplying by e to the power of Good. C3, which can just be a. Yes, because this here, using your index laws, that is just a constant, right? And so actually you can just write that as a e to the negative t on five, okay? So you can see how you can do this in this many lines or you can just do it in one line. So I think I would be okay with you writing that from memory almost. I will double check whether that's acceptable or not. Um, but this is how to derive this, but this is the actual solution to the um, equation. If you are going to do this, make a statement about it. Like, this is a differential equation which has a solution as an exponential equation, right? So, um, that's how we can get that, first of all. How do we find A then? That's what you guys were so worked up about. <laughs> how can we find our constant? Yeah? Leave it? Well, we're not going to answer the question then. We're going to find the Cartesian equation. So, What are our initial conditions here? At t equals to zero, what do we know about the horizontal uh, velocity? T equals to zero. Well, what information have they given us? Uh, so, 30. Oh, the so that's the velocities. Like that's the velocity, right? But I'm only looking moment, this is why we're breaking up into horizontal and vertical components, right? So what's our horizontal velocity equal to? The horizontal component of our velocity? 15, right? Okay, so t equals zero, v equals 15. So then you can, sorry, to v, x dot. I should have written x dot equals 15. That's that, that's that why I confused you a little bit with the, the v there. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay, so then let's substitute those values in. So 15 is equal to uh, a e to the 0, and so a is just equal to 15, by the looks of it. Um, so x dot equals to 15 e to the negative t on 5. Awesome. Good stuff. What do we need to do next, you reckon? Of, of, of just like, oh, displacement. Right, exactly. So this is why, we, so we are deriving the equations of motion, as you guys said, and there is a fair amount of derivation for these initial kind of questions, so it's good to practice that skill there. But now here, you're, you know, you're iterating an exponential equation here. That's not too bad. Uh, we want to find the displacement equation now. So what do we need to do? We need to integrate this guy. Yeah, this model is like imperfect models, right? So <laughs> even though we're considering resistance in both um, directions now, it's still, still imperfect, right? Because uh, we're not considering surface area and stuff like that. So let's integrate this guy. So we're going to get what, negative 5 times 15 e to the negative t on 5 plus our constant. And do we have any other initial conditions here? Doesn't say that's starting at the origin, does it? But I feel like that's assumed at 
t equals zero. So at t equals to zero, x is equal to zero. And so we're gonna get zero is equal to negative 75 e to the zero plus c, and c is gonna equal to 75. So that's why x of t, which is the first part of what we're trying to find over here. Right? So that's gonna be equal to negative 75 e to the negative t on five plus 75 there. And if you want to write that a bit more nicely, you can do some factorization and stuff as well. So rearranging 75 outside of 1 minus e to negative 2 and 5, which is a bit nicer. So far, so good. Any questions about that? Not too bad.